Hello and welcome to this video on building a vapor smoothing station for FDM parts. My name is Robert French and I'm a 3D printing applications engineer with Go Engineer. So why would we want to vapor smooth our FDM parts? Well there's a couple reasons. We can increase the overall surface smoothness of these parts, kind of melting those different Z layers together. This will help improve the overall look of our parts, give them a little bit more of a glossy or shiny feel. And this can actually potentially increase the strength as well as those different Z layers melt together. They're grabbing each other better and giving us a little bit more strength potentially, depending on the geometry. And lastly, it just sounded like a fun thing to do. We can experiment, see what different results we get, and try to learn something along the way. Now, what are the different things we want to consider when we build our vapor smoothing station? We want to make sure that all the components involved are going to be resistant to the different acetone or other solvents we're going to use. We potentially want some air circulation inside of the chamber or vapor circulation inside the chamber, making sure we're distributing that solvent everywhere. We might want to consider heating to accelerate that process, make sure we turn into vapor as quick as possible, and maybe if we're in a cold environment, we could use some help doing that. We always want to make sure we have pro proper ventilation and other safety measures because we're dealing with somewhat volatile liquids, different flash points, and just want to make sure we're safe at all times. Now, what other items are going to be required to do this, or what total list do we need here? Well, we're going to need acetone or some other solvent in order to do this. Uh, I like to buy a fan, once again, to keep that circulation in there, keep the vapor well distributed, get some even smoothing on our parts. Uh, we're going to want some part suspension. We don't want the part sitting down on the ground or in a bath of this different acetone or solvent. We want to make sure it's kind of up in the air and, and getting only the vapor exposed to it. We're going to need some different hardware to do that, nuts and bolts you can see pictured here. I also have some brushes, so we can kind of accelerate this process by actually brushing directly onto our printed parts. And, of course, the heat pad last is optional, but can help accelerate, and it's not too much cost to throw that in as well. Let's jump into the time lapse and check out the building of the chamber itself. The first step for creating my vapor chamber is installing the platform where my parts will rest. Now I'm simply just going to take a tape measure and measure some equal distance holes from the bottom of the chamber so that I can insert some fasteners and give this metal tray a place to rest. Now that my holes are drilled, hardware's installed, my metal tray rests perfectly inside there, and I have a great platform for parts to sit on. The next step is going to be installing my circulation fan. Now just like I did a moment ago with my metal tray, I'm just going to use the existing bolt pattern on the fan, mark off a couple holes, and start drilling. One additional hole I'll need to drill is for the power cable for the fan. Now, didn't have a large enough drill bit at the time, so I regret the way I had to do this, but got the hole made nonetheless and have a great entry port for the power cable. With all the holes drilled, I can simply place my fasteners through, and you'll notice I use a couple nuts as standoffs trying to space my fan away from the edge of my container or side of my container. That's just to make sure I don't choke the fan and give proper airflow to the back side of it and keep everything circulating correctly. I do drill a couple additional holes in the side of my chamber to give some of the vapor a chance to vent if necessary, but I can always plug those back up to make sure I'm keeping a proper level of acetone vapor or solvent vapor in there and make sure my parts are truly getting smoothed. But once again, these can be plugged up anytime and keep the concentration higher or lower as I see fit. 
the last step here is in really complicated. I always have my heat pad that I can place underneath and when I have a pool of acetone or solvent at the bottom I can accelerate the process, turn on that heat pad and get the vapor developed a lot quicker. That's it. That's all it took to create this very very cheap do-it-yourself vapor smoothing station. Hope you enjoyed it. Look out in the future for some of the parts I'll actually plan to vapor smooth.